Item number nine, application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, docket number 15-0234, block 886, lot 21160 Lexington Avenue, the former New York School of Applied Design for Women, an individual landmark, a neoclassical style institutional building designed by Harvey Wiley of Corbett and built in 1908 to 09. This is an application to legalize the Installation of louvers at the roof through window and through windows without landmarks preservation commission permits and the installation of partition walls behind windows in non-compliance with certificate of no effect 13-4516 and to install a door at the area way. on the corner of East 30th Street and Lexington Avenue. Uh, the application is to legalize the installation of louvers on the sloped roof facing the north, uh, as well as um, louvers installed at the windows uh, facing Lexington Avenue. Um, the installation of a louver door is also being proposed at the area way along East 30th Street. The commission will also be reviewing the installation of partition walls uh, behind windows that are, are in compliance, uh, non-compliance with certificate of no effect 13-4516 issued on April 2013 for interior alteration which approved the partition walls behind the windows. These partitions are um, left unfinished with the back side of the sheet rock uh, exposed along with the metal stud framing facing the street. Um, this is along Lexington Avenue as well as the windows along 30th Street at all the multi-light windows. Um, the commission has also issued certificate of appropriateness uh, 13-6903 in October 2012 to alter an entrance and area way um, along East 30th Street. Okay, thanks, Kara. Uh, hearing open. Motion. Second. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jason Gold from Richard H. Lewis Architect. Uh, there are, um, as Ms. So pointed out, there are sort of three big categories. The first category is miscellaneous number of small items that are mostly pertain to the entrance area way and access. Second is uh, uh, two louvered items uh, that's part of the uh, redesign of the mechanical system for the building. And the third is uh, this, as she mentioned, the partitions that are behind the windows facing both 30th Street and Lexington Avenue. Uh, first to run through the list of miscellaneous items. Uh, one is the door at the areaway, uh, which is proposed right here to close off a mechanical equipment <laughs> area. This shows you the existing condition and the proposed condition. Uh, the second are uh, security cameras, uh, which are located also in the areaway. Right here, below the level of the sidewalk. Uh, next are, is a security light, which is located right here. Uh, third, uh, hot water heat vents which are located right here. All of these are below the level of grade. Uh, and intercom, which is located uh, right here next to the um, access door, the ADA access door. There's uh, sprinkler connections, which occur, uh, best to see that in the elevation, one right here and one right here. The building was not previously uh, protected by a sprinkler system. And then, a light over the accessible ADA compliant entrance right here. So that's the, these are all the kind of minor miscellaneous items, but they're all visible from the street. Second are the louvers. Uh, there's one set of louvers that occurs at the second floor and one set of louvers that occurs on the roof. The louvers at the second floor are in the lower lights of this pair of windows right here. Uh, they are provide ventilation for a cafe that's inside the building. I didn't mention that the building is uh, had been vacant for a number of years, and uh, it was 
you know, built originally in 1909 as a school for applied arts. It's still uh, serving an artistic function. It's now a department store for Conde Garcon, and it's full of little boutiques of uh, very sort of forward thinking, it's kind of like a fashion playground for grown ups in there. So there, it includes a cafe, and. <laughs> Go ahead, that was a good summary of its okay. use. It includes a cafe, and this is the ventilation for the cafe. Uh, replaces uh, some other uh, louvers that were uh, located higher up in these windows. Uh, by being in the lowest lights of the, of the windows, by the way, because these are very deeply recessed, although you can definitely see them from across the street, you actually cannot see, these people down here would not be able to see these because they're so deeply recessed. Uh, the second and uh, much larger group of louvers occurs in the roof. Uh, the existing condition were a series of uh, kind of uh, skylights that were in terrible shape. They had been pierced by various attempts at mechanical work uh, over the course of the years. And uh, what we did is uh, keep the original framing, but replace the uh, panels with, uh, with louvers. Uh, because the building was built to the lot line on all four sides, there was no opportunity to put mechanical equipment the exterior, rear, or side of the building. So actually, all of the mechanical, build, mechanical equipment that serves the entire apartment store is behind these louvers within the volume of the roof. Uh, and so that's the location of the, uh, that was our really uh, only opportunity to provide the air exchange that we needed for the mechanical system. Uh, and then finally, the partitions behind the windows. Uh, everyone keeps on using the terminology unfinished. Uh, they are finished. It's just that they're not finished in a traditional way with sheetrock on the outside. Sorry, the partitions behind the windows? Uh, the partitions that uh, Caruso pointed out behind these windows, because a department store doesn't need daylight, it needs wall space. And uh, the client uh, was quite insistent, in fact, that there not be sheetrock there. They really wanted the entire, their whole ethos is that they are perpetually evolving, perpetually work in progress. And they wanted uh, what you saw through those windows to express that, not to be wank, but to be actually expressing something that's constantly in the process of being designed, of being built, of, <coughs> of happening. And, uh, and so they actually insisted that there not be sheetrock through these windows. Uh, these partitions are 12 inches behind the glass. Uh, again, they're very deeply recessed. It's not evident at all when you're adjacent to the building. Uh, because of the reflections on the glass, it was difficult even for us to photograph this. However, um, if you stand at the right time of day, at the right angle, you can definitely see them. Uh, this, what is the material of those partitions? This plan right here, you can see there's metal studs, and on the inside, facing the interior of the store, is sheetrock. So what you see here, is the brown inside face, brown, like the color of craft paper, of the sheetrock, and you see the metal studs. Okay. And that was, that's part of their work in progress. ethos. Yes. But if it's work in progress, how can anyone know about it if it's facing the exterior? Do you actually see it from the exterior or not really? You see what from the exterior? You see the studs. Yes, you do see the studs see through the, the studs? glass. Letting the light is right if you're standing in the right angle. And so it looks okay. like what? A work in, it looks like a it, it looks like, it looks like the inside. It looks like the inside of a partition that doesn't have uh, that doesn't have sheetrock on it. And this floor is if this is one floor or is this uh, no, this is the full height of these two floors of windows on both street facing elevations. So and also, actually, also these windows as well. <laughs> but this is so not visible from, you have to be a mile away mm -hmm. to be able to get the angle to see into those deeply recessed windows right there. So all of those windows on both sides have sheetrock on them? Yes. Against them, okay. Well, not directly against them. The no, studs are 12 inches side. in. They, yes. They're all the same as that. Okay. Yes, they are. Thank you. Oh. So there wasn't a way to do something that looks, let's say, even finished or further back. Again, this was a this was a specific directive from the uh, uh, from the client 
They did not want something that looked done in the traditional way. They wanted something that looked like it was in the works. But uh, they finished building. building. Come to the wrong place. We definitely had that conversation with them many times. Yeah. But, interior of the building, even though it is less than 18 inches from yeah. the glass. Okay. okay. I do have a question, and, though, it was yeah. um, sure. Is the sheet rock finished on the interior? No. no. So it's oh, on wait, the wait, interior wait, I'm sorry. facing the goods. Facing goods? Yes, in fact. So how does that fit within mm -hmm. that unfinished ethos? It's, fin it's not just painted white. Uh, trust me, it's finished in a variety of amazing, astounding, and I fashion am. forward ways, including walls of macrame and covered with assemblages of birdhouses and it's a it's quite a striking installation. But they could have done a finished sheet rock on the outside too, right? To be part of the it's the, it was certainly physically possible, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't want to do that. Correct. Okay. So any other questions? We'll go to testimony. Thank you. Barbara, Zay, please. Barbara Zay of the Historic Districts Council. In general, HDC finds the installation of louvers on a pitched roof to be inappropriate, especially on a structure as elegant as this one. If the louvers are allowed to remain, though the practicality of non-vertical louvers seems problematic to us, HDC asks that they be better camouflaged to look more like skylights. The same goes for the louvers at the lower level of the Lexington Avenue facade. HDC finds the louvers and white panels inserted, inserted into the windows to be, in, to be a very visible intrusion. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Community Board 5, Marjorie, recommends approval of the application. Mm -hmm. Full board, 36-0. Okay. Yes, the yeah. the white uh, painted here. Uh, the panels on either side here are white. Um, I personally think they shouldn't be white. So I'm totally happy if you would force our clients hand on it. <laughs> Done. Now we agree. Okay. Uh, any other, anything you want to say about well, the testimony? I mean, we, we had a really interesting conversation with the community board. Yeah. And we actually yeah, did the community like board it. twice. First yeah. for the miscellaneous items and the louvers, and then once mm -hmm. uh, the preservation staff informed us that they wanted us to bring this issue to you all. We then went back to the uh, community board with that. And it was an incredibly interesting and engaging conversation. And ultimately, as you can see, yep. they were convinced. OK, thank you. Uh, let's see. I think maybe Marjorie will start this. <laughs> I just want to know how come I didn't know about this playground for adults before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so OK. So it's an individual landmark. And I'm not having so much problem with the idea of the louvers because they can be painted and they're, that's kind of a reversible condition and ideally someday there'll be a better mechanical system. Um, but in terms of, um, and, and I think most of those, I think the little interventions, those little objects sort of scattered around, if they're painted the color of the, the masonry would also be okay. It's actually the studs that I'm having trouble with. <laughs> so um, I don't buy the ethos thing at all, um, because really, if there's ethos going on, it would be going on in the interior, and it's all decorated. So why don't we get decorated on the non-ethos side? So, um, and I think what the real issue now is that there's no physical way for, your, uh, for a worker's body to fit into that little space. So you, they're really going to have to take down the stud walls and move them back. And, and I think that it needs to be treated in some way. Um, I, I don't know. So OK, so in terms of the, the louver system, though, if this had come to us fresh, we'd want to know a lot more about what it's ventilating. And I don't actually see drawings that give me information about 
what's being ventilated, and maybe there's another way of accomplishing that. So normally I think we would have gone into more detail. I'd like to know a little bit more about that, but um, yeah. I mean, this is a fantastic, eccentric, individual landmark building, um, and it, it has a it has had a sad history in the last uh, few decades, and it's great that it's being repurposed. But I think that if there was ever a case of the of the uh, king's new clothes, it's it's the ethos of the studs. I, I, I you know, at emperor's new clothes, it, I think it just looks like there's no there's no art to it that I can see other than the conceptual cloaking of it as concept. Uh, it would look just the same were it unintentional and unconceptual. So, you know, I'm just not buying it. And, and on an individual landmark, uh, I think that, that such creative, conceptually thoughtful folks could certainly come up with something that would enhance the landmark building of their adult playground and uh, uh, make it uh, <laughs> uh, work with the landmark a little bit better. Um, I think that the other interventions are more or less okay. The little white squares should be uh, painted to match the, uh, the mullions of the windows, uh, as should the louvers. The w light over the, uh, over the f ground floor uh, egress door seems to be uh, small and innocuous. The uh, work of the areaway actually improves the areaway, and I think is appropriate. I think that the louvers on the roof should have uh, maintained the uh, scale of the lights of the skylight, but I think that uh, if they're painted to um, match the uh, framing color of the, of the existing skylights that are to remain, I think it would be okay. You know, I've admired this building for years, and I, I was once in it, I've uh, forgotten why, when Truro owned it, um, but I never knew it was uh, designed by Harvey Wiley Corbett, one of my, one of, one of our most important early 20th century theoreticians. He didn't get to build as much as, um, as other prominent architects at the time. Anyway, it's an extraordinarily wonderful uh, unusual building, so it has to be treated very carefully. And like others who've already spoken, I don't buy the ethos deal either <laughs> at all. Um, so something else has to be worked out there. Um, I think the, um, the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the louvers, I, I can accept the louvers if they're painted a dark color. The areaway is uh, okay. Uh, I guess that's about it. So just reminding everyone, it is an, 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 an individual landmark to which the highest standards must um, be applied. I would suggest that I agree with my colleagues about um, using great care with uh, materials and colors to make sure that all of these proposed louvers blend in. Um, and uh, I would... Uh, reject um, the ethos claim as well and um, and m somehow make sure that the intended transparency of the windows which are such an important part of this um, individual landmark is not destroyed Michael I'm, I'm okay with the uh, area way work I also agree with the comments about the louvers being painted properly um, the, the issue of the visible playground equipment um, for me is one that uh, I can't approve. It, it robs this uh, individual landmark of its dignity and formality, and I cannot approve that. John? Um, yeah, I, I agree with all those comments, and I just want to come up with a suggestion. Uh, well, first of all, I think that the louvers should be painted and the skylights painted dark and I'm fine with the area away. But I think that maybe some kind of a transparent panels could be put in the areas where the windows to hang the little birdhouses or whatever it is that's on there um, with something that is less, um, that doesn't have these studs behind it, or if it does, that the studs are coated in something that, in, you know, being you're really into decoration, that's part of the decoration of the building. 
uh, and, and I could accept that. And if they were willing to do something transparent that was uh, covered um, very carefully on the back, I would let it, I would be okay with staff doing it if staff's okay with that. Yeah, I agree with all the comments, and uh, it seems to me that these could be accomplished with the staff. Uh, I agree with the, the area way, the, um, the whole issue about the studs, the transparency of the windows, and the painting of the louvers, but I don't really see why uh, those can't be done with the staff, but uh, as um, long as all of them are done. One I more thing, Bob. Uh, yes? I'm sorry, yeah. and to make the studs part of the design, that, that's all I wanted to add, sorry. I think yeah. because there's a design question and there are many different sort of solutions and options on how to deal with it, we should work, work with them with the and bring it back to you. Back okay. for All right, fine, fine. Okay, so we'll see it. We'll see, fine. We'll see it again with all with those uh, issues that it, there's been a consensus on addressed, and uh, there's also area of agreement on what to approve. But you know what the, the core of the issue is: work with the staff to do that. We'll represent it and then take action. At a subsequent time, not today, close the hearing today, please. Motion, second, without objection. Thank you.